Now, on about the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in, and they did not find a body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were standing, greatly perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. However, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified, and the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words. They returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them, who told them these things to the apostles. And the words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what he had seen and heard. Jesus Christ is risen today. Yes, he is risen indeed. I know you were saying that in your homes while you were sitting and listening because Jesus Christ is no longer in the tomb. Happy Resurrection Day. Father, we pray that you would be with us in our prayers, that you would be with us at this difficult times, and that your word will invigorate and stimulate our hearts, that our spirits will cry out to yours, to the Holy Spirit, that we need you and we love you. Jesus Christ is risen today. Join us as we sing praises to him, because my Redeemer lives.
This morning as we were walking over, my five-year-old and I, he noticed that there were not very many cars that were on the road, and he was a little concerned about that, that it was Easter and it was Sunday and there was not, not any cars going to church, and I reminded him, we, you know, the churches are, are shut down right now, and he said, but even if the churches are shut down, we can still worship God because that's the most important thing in the world, and I said, wow, <laughs> you are right, so this morning... That is what we are going to continue to do. The kingdom 
what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus.
holiday season, Lord, with everything else going on. Father, we choose to praise you. We choose to see the sacrifice that you sent your son to make for us, God, and we we stand before you in awe and humbled and grateful, Lord, for that sacrifice that was done out of such pure love for us, Lord. The sacrifice that was made so that we could have life, because without it, we were just dead. morning, God, we shake off that death. We shake it off, Father, and we look at our lives and we say, no, today is the day. Today is the day that I'm going to embrace that salvation. That sacrifice that Jesus made is not going to be in vain. I'm going to choose to live my life fully and wholly for the one who saved me. I am going to run out of that grave. I am going to let go of the sin that entangles me. I'm going to let go of the path that I've been following, and I am going to run out of that grave with him and to live a life of freedom that he bought for me.
Jesus when I met you. You called my name. I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name. recognize some of those songs, but they were great ones, sung from hearts in today's words, because people are happy that Jesus loves them, and that there was salvation in his name. You know, it's his name. Why did people say on the last day, Jesus, don't you know me? And he said, no, I don't know you, but they said, but people... There, we raised people from the dead in your name. We, we cast out demons in your name. It's the name of Jesus. In his name is power. In his name is salvation. The only name in heaven or earth, heaven or earth, nothing can stand against it. I hope everyone's feeling in a celebratory mood this morning, regardless of where you are, whether you're locked in or whether you're in or out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Father, we, we come to you acknowledging that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, the majestic one, the awesome one, the only one, high King of heaven. To you, all praise and glory goes. All praise and glory is in your name. We love you, Lord. We come to you. You said that you are like a fortress that we run into and hide and shelter in. Your son made the analogy that we would shelter under your wings, just like a, a chicken or a duck or any of the other birds of the air shelter the young and keep the danger away. Lord, there's lots of things going on today, as you know better than we do. You're the only one that knows what's going on. Yet we come to you and we thank you. 
We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for your glory and for your love, your crazy, unboundless love that love people such as us. Many of us are stuck at home. Many of us are also working. The people, the lowly ones that not long ago were complaining about a living wage and now they're the ones that we need. Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone who's out working this day. Bless the people that are keeping food, making it, sending it, shipping it, cooking it for us. Bless the people, Lord, that are moving things from point A to point B. Bless those people who are out in the streets helping the homeless and the needy. Bless the people who are patrolling the streets and keeping us safe, the police and the fire. Bless the ambulance drivers that are transporting people to and from the hospitals and bless the hospital workers. Bless the military, Lord, and all these people that have been deployed during this time. We come to you, Lord, and we speak your name. We cry out your name. We ask for salvation in your name because we love you and we thank you and we come to you whenever we need things whenever whatever and whenever Lord touch those folks at home right now if anyone is hearing my voice Lord and doesn't know you let your name the name of Jesus the righteous one the holy one let that name go straight to their heart and soul. Touch them, Lord. Let them know that there is a salvation that they can get. That there is one who loved them so much that they came down. Stepped down from heaven just so that we could see. So that we could know better. And we thank you, Lord. And we love you and we praise you. And all those things are not enough. But yet it's all we have. Because there's nothing we can offer that you need. And yet you want to hear our voices. You want to hear our songs. And so we offer them up to you, Lord. Because we love you. And we ask this and seal this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you know, there are a couple announcements. Not a whole lot. But a couple announcements. We will, of course, be <clears throat> not having most of the things that happen here. I'm trying to do a Bible study most of the days during the week. Uh, sometimes that's a little different because you get to come into my living room or to my kitchen when I'm drinking coffee and, and to hear some things. I hope you avail yourself of that. There's lots of great things happening online. Lots of good people that are doing wonderful things. You know, the church goes on being the body of Christ to this community and this town and the world. The church is you, the body of Christ. This particular building is nothing more than a congregation of believers and family members who get together to celebrate as the body, as the church, on days. Please remember, however, to send your tithes and offerings to First Baptist Church, 220 Fountain Avenue, Elwood City, 16117, so that we may continue to share the love of Christ with everyone. And there are a lot of people that are being touched. Remember, there's great people living here and lots of help for all those people in need. There's a lot of things going on in Pennsylvania where we live at. There's some new rules and regulations, and there's also some new things for aid to help you out. You can go on to the Pennsylvania Attorney General.org, and there's a whole fairly simple list of agencies and things that will help you out. How you can do this and that. Who you can get a hold of. If you need anything else, you're f feel free to contact us here either through Facebook, through Messenger, on my personal site, email, or feel free to call me. My cell phone number is 724-651-7687. We love you so much. You know, this is Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. This year's celebration of the resurrection of our Lord is vastly different than 
any other ones that I can remember. All across the globe, Easter celebrations are different this year. No mass church services. No grand choirs singing cantatas and basilicas. No marches, parades through the streets. No penitents parading through the cities. At home here in Elwood City, the sharing of the cross was canceled. And that's an event that I particularly like. That's when we take a representative, representation of the cross and we take it from our sanctuary and to other churches. And they to other churches. And we get to join them for a service. This year there's no Easter sunrise service and the, you saw the beginning of this. Uh, my wife and I were up there this morning. We were the only ones. There was a few coming up as we were leaving. And I missed that as well. That graveyard, symbolically foretelling of the time to come when all those who died in Christ will be raised forever. You know, it's been a year after the blaze that burnt Notre Dame. They are set to hold Good Friday services there amongst the lockdown. But don't worry. They, like us, will not be opening the church to all the worshipers. There's only seven folks that will be there to celebrate Good Friday and Easter. But they are celebrating. And we need to be celebrating too. Whenever we find ourselves in whatever condition we find ourselves, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. The response to that from all the faithful one is, yes, he is risen indeed. I've been getting into the habit of telling people the church has not been canceled. It's been deployed. When Jesus died on the cross in his physical body, many despaired and many rejoiced. But there was not one person on the face of the earth that had any idea of what God was doing. Still don't know today. Many have said that the end times are upon us, and they're right. These are indeed the end times, or better yet, the last days. Scripture assures us that no one knows the time of Christ's return, and because of that we should treat each and every day as though it's this day. The end times can be considered all the times from Christ's resurrection until his coming again. So you see, I was right to say that we are living in them. That's not to say that the Hempheline trumpets will not sound and the shout will not come down and he will not come back today. The point is, we need to be ready. Nothing gets people looking towards God more than a disaster or a pandemic. There's no doubt that when the curfews and all the stay-at-home orders and, are lifted, life will return, but it will be different than it was before. Think about that. The lives of the disciples and Christ's followers were never the same after he was crucified. When he died on the cross, they despaired and thought that their life was over. It would be so different if they could survive at all. After he was resurrected, boy, were their lives different then and forevermore. They thought it was all over when it had just begun. When we leave isolation... It would just be the beginning as well. But the beginning of what? It depends on you. If this time alone has drawn you closer to the Lord, then you will be with a fresh outlook and you will have a renewed spirit. But if you spend your time fretting and warring and being manipulated by all the so-called news outlets, you will emerge different as well. Whatever point of time you think we are at, the thought of Christ's return should put you into a celebratory mood. The folks at Notre Dame are celebrating in the burnout remains of the cathedral. If they can do that, you can celebrate at your home. So I choose to worship and celebrate my Lord's promise, kept for me by the fact that the act of sacrifice done by Him all those years ago. I choose to open my heart and my soul to him, my master, and my God. Jesus Christ is risen today. Back triumphal from the grave, and there is nothing that can hold him or his children back. You may remember this song. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. 
our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise then let us sing. Alleluia. You don't know the whole thing, you know the Alleluias. Unto Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave. Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the pains which he endured, Alleluia, our salvation have procured. Alleluia. Now above the sky he's king. Alleluia. Where forever angels sing. Alleluia. Sing we now to God above. Alleluia. Praise eternal as his love. Alleluia. Praise him all ye heavenly host. Alleluia. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Did you sing that with me? Did it lift your heart? Was I off key? Does anyone care? That's because it is simultaneously the news, the song, the best thing to hope for and the most assured event in all of history. Christ is risen. Jesus is not in the tomb. That picture that you saw is my favorite one because it's not the empty tomb with the shroud lying there. It's not the, the stone rolled back. It's Jesus, my Lord, running out of the tomb with the shreds of death falling behind him. When Jesus died here on earth, he went, it says, down to hell. Now, this is what I see. The gates of hell are broken. That's because my Lord put his foot through them and shattered the hinges and the door. And they stand open to this day because death no longer has a hold. Because my Lord is more powerful than death. Christ is risen. My destiny, your destiny is with him. My faith cries out. My dreams resolve around it. Yours should too. Seeing Jesus face to face, being held in his arms, being free forever with him. There is no force in heaven or in hell or in between that can cancel that great news out. These words are all from the word of God, what the Bible tells us. And they are the very best of words. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him to appear the second time without sin and salvation. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the breath which, bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat of and not die. But of that day 
Your heart knoweth no man. No. Not the angels in heaven. For my Father only knows. Then we which are alive shall and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we will ever be with the Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and elections sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. And by this, we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, to him the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever believes the Son of God has a testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God is made a, is made a liar. Because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. See, whatever happens to us during these unsettling times, know that the Lord knows you and loves you. He loves you so much that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That was John 3.16 and a little bit on both sides. And my hope, hope that you all have the Son's life in you. It is indeed a time and a day to celebrate. So enjoy your family and tell them that you love them. Tell the Lord that you love him as well. Jesus Christ is risen today. Yes, we all cry out. He is risen indeed. God bless you. Go with God. Fear not, for he holds you in his hand. We love you.